What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Today, we are going to be covering, oh, such an important special topic, SHTF and the use of amateur radio, but not just amateur radio. We're also going to be talking about our brothers and sisters in GMRS land, FRS, and even those CB people. Because I got a friend out here with me. I got one Randolfo of Not a Rubicon Productions. And he's going to be joining me. Link is in the description to go check out Randolfo. If you're not already familiar with him, you probably should be. So we're going to get started here real soon. Enjoy the memes. Right. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course and joining me on your Saturday. You could be doing a lot of things, but you're here hanging out with me uh, talking about radio. What kind of a nerd are we all, huh? How about that? I do have somebody that's not a nerd, though. He actually goes out and does things, gets outdoors, off-roading. Randolfo, not a Rubicon, is the man that we're going to be talking to today. But before we get to that, i got a couple of opening things I need to hit up. If you'd like to help support the Ham Radio Crash Course, see, there he is. We're just going to hide him for a second. <laughs> He'll be back, guys. Don't worry. Uh, if you'd like to help support the Ham Radio Crash Course, go check out our hamtactical.com, which is our merch store. Hey, just in time for the holidays, would you like a... Uh, a FT8 stocking? Well, you can get one. Go check it out. Would. Would. Appreciate it. This is ran by my wife, uh, hamtactical.com. Would appreciate uh, you go ahead and checking that out. All right? Also, we are doing a giveaway. Uh, a giveaway for 300,000 subscribers that I hit here about a month ago. Uh, took a little while to get this all together, but man, oh man, we're going to be doing an ICOM 705 giveaway, an FTDX10 giveaway, a Moby-linked TNC4 giveaway, and we're also going to be giving away some uh, PowerFilm solar panels. Super, super excited. Link is in the description for that as well. We are going to be doing it the same night that I do my epic Christmas light antenna thing that I do every year. I build an antenna out of Christmas lights. And yes, they do light up, when I, especially when I hit it with uh, 800 watts of power, as I have done in the past. And we go until they blow. Remember, guys? That's the, uh, that's the motto of that. So, all right. We've got Randy. Randolfo is going to be joining us. And, and you've definitely seen his videos. He's, he's all over the place. Extremely popular right now with... Not just uh, GMRS radio discussions, but also radios that are used in the amateur radio service as well. And I always think he does a really good job of balancing humor, because this is supposed to be fun, guys, and helpful information. And I know there's a lot of people that uh, really do appreciate what he does. I'm making sure that I got through all those mental checklists uh, that I needed to do before I bring Randy on here. But we'll just go ahead and move forward with that. Let's say a big, a big hello to Randolfo. How are you, man? Hey, Josh. How's it going? Good, good. I'm glad to have you back. Uh, we The last time we talked uh, was on the live... Well, you and I have talked since then. We've made videos since then. But the last time we were live on my channel was uh, for talking about GMRS radio recommendations for an amateur radio operator. So a little bit more complicated GMRS radios. Um, I'm hitting you blind on this one because I, I actually thought of this as we were going live. Is there a new hot GMRS radio that you would recommend for an amateur radio operator? Something nice and complicated with all the bells and whistles? Hitting you out. There it is. Uh, no, I'm not sure why you would ask that. Uh, I like this uh, new Wuxin Ocean radio, uh -huh. the uh, Q10G. Uh, there is a Q10H version mm. that I have heard rumors are is unlockable so that it can also transmit on uh, is it, GMRS. Is, is it this guy? Uh, is it this one that I'm, I'm literally holding? I think I've got one. Is I don't that know. it? Does that say Q? H. Does that say Q10G or Q10? Uh, H and H. H. Yeah, that's it. So, so that I have heard is unlockable. Although I know that you, as an upstanding citizen of the ham radio community, would never do such a thing. Yeah. Um, but this is a, a nice radio. Um, I like mine. Um, you I noticed it was right here, right at arm's reach. I noticed that. And actually, I like you, the GPS on it. You just re uh, produced a video on that, which I watched. I thought that's really cool. So uh, GMRS folks are all sending their GPS group coordinates over uh, GMRS now, right? GPS over GMRS. That's, that was allowed right. like last year, I think they allowed it, right? Yeah, it's a new, a new rule. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, 
usefulness is limited, but if you're sure. off-road, uh, it's great just to even see your own coordinates, uh, just to tell somebody, but to be able to send them to somebody and see on a little map where the guy hiking with yeah. you, you know, 200 yards away, where he is in relation to you, it can be helpful. Yeah, I and love it's, it. It's a nice little radio. I like that radio. Hey, well, uh, thank you for the update on that. Got a thank you from Carlos in Super Chat. Thanks for the WinLink reply. I did reply to Carlos here. I think it was yesterday. Uh, my new mission is to get every new technician learn about using it on VHF, UHF. For uh, WinLink, yeah, I appreciate that. Get get started on that one as well. I think I might have clipped uh, that pop-up. So I'll get that sorted out here in a second. But thank you for the uh, Super Chat. Really do appreciate it. So the topic of today, oh, and TC Fitz, thank you for becoming a, a member of the chat. Appreciate it. So the topic for today is SHTF and using radios maybe outside of their service or when you're not licensed, all that stuff. I made a video about it. You might have saw it. A lot of people saw it. And I got two comments. Either one, I wasn't focusing enough on SHTF when the there's no rules. It's the Wild West and we pull out our boof wings and we, we start shooting you know, our, our six guns. Uh, but the other comment I got is, well, I wish all the YouTubers would talk the way you talk, Josh, about following the rules. And, well, who's that other YouTuber that's not following the rules? They're like, that not a Rubicon guy. He's out there telling people to go buy Baofangs and illegally transmit. If you had a, uh, a mission, well, you know, give me the elevator speech, your 60-second statement or reply to that. I think that might help people out a little bit. Uh, I don't think I've ever told anybody to go out and buy anything and use it illegally. I have pointed out the rules and the laws uh, that anyone can buy a Bufwang ham radio or any ham radio. There's no rules against purchasing or owning or possessing a Bufwang. You said it wrong. It's Bufwang. Bufwang. Uh, radio or Bufwang. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone can own one. Anyone can possess one. And... I don't think I have ever said, go buy one and use it without a ham license. However, okay. just because you did not pay the government for a piece of paper does not mean that you can't, uh, or it does not mean able to use it. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that you're not capable of learning how to use it and use it correctly. Mm -hmm. So I've probably said things like that a few times. Uh, sure. And I guess that's a, that's a distinction is that I think there's nothing wrong with owning pretty much any radio. It's kind of like how you would deploy it, right? More than anything from your point of view? Well, yeah. Uh, you, uh, obviously you want to know how to use one. Uh, and, the, <laughs> and well, I've made a video a while back, uh, one of my first SHTF related videos about many people that will just buy a, a boof wang or whatever and mm -hmm. throw it in their back uh, in their bag mm -hmm. and hope that when the day comes when they actually need to use it they're just going to pull it out and on the keys press nine and one and one and call for help yeah uh and if you're that guy that's good because that's just more toilet paper and food for the rest of us because you're not going to make it uh so i don't know where i was going with that you if you you want to know how to use your equipment um I think yeah. sometimes my point is you don't have to, just because you don't have a license does not mean that you mm -hmm. don't know how to use it. Yeah. And I, I think that's I, I guess that that leads into a good question here is uh, how likely, regardless if it's a GMRS operator or, you know, amateur radio operator, from your point of view, would it be for someone like that just buys the boof wang and puts it on a shelf, never charges it? probably doesn't even program it. Um, how likely is it they're actually going to be able to seek help assistance from someone if there is an emergency? Oh, if they just buy it, throw it on the shelf? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's zero. They're how, dead. What do you, <laughs> how likely do you think the uh, consumer base of our videos is that of, are of that type of people? I think the people that watch my videos and your videos, uh, probably at least they're taking the time to come and watch a video about how to use one of those radios so uh, yeah i think they are in the process of learning how to use it there's a lot more to learn than just watching a video but you can learn a lot from watching particularly my videos yeah well, um, well said i i agree with you i agree with you sorry go uh, ahead. so i yeah i guess they're the people that are out there seeking information on the youtubes you know they're they're ahead of the guy that just throws it and you know puts it up in the in the closet right and there are those people. I know that there are those people. 
So from from your point of view, uh, diving into some of the questions I, I put together beforehand, what constitutes an emergency for using a radio? It, amateur, first responder, GMRS without a license from your point of view? Okay, so from my point of view, mm -hmm. and that is the point of view, this is very important, of a off-roader that uses GMRS on the weekends and a YouTube hobo, not an attorney. Right. Uh, my point of view is, number one, don't listen to what I say and don't listen to what that guy Josh says. Go look up the rules yourself. Make sure you understand the rules yourself. But uh, as I see it, there's kind of three situations, uh, potential situ situations. Shit, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I, I, I made some notes here. So situation number one that somebody could call, I don't know, an emergency, not necessarily shit at the fan. Right. Uh, is... I need help right now. Uh, I've, I'm out hiking. I have my whatever radio, and I slip and I fall and break my ankle, or somebody that I'm with off-roading uh, has a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. No cell phone service. Uh, no other means of communication. I can't just pick up the phone. Right. I need help. So to me, based on my understanding of the rules of the FCCs, I can use any radio at my disposal to call for help. The uh, second is more of a shit hit the fan type situation mm -hmm. uh, where maybe there is a, a widespread issue, uh, an earthquake, a hurricane, uh, uh, wildfire. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's something, California. It's something we know about, right? Everything's right. on fire. Right. So it's, uh, and maybe we lose electricity where we are for several days or uh, a week or two at, uh, at the most. So in a case like that, uh, if there are no other means of communication and you're stuck in your house and grandma doesn't have her insulin and you've got no other way to, yeah, good point. to, uh, to call for help, you pick up the radio if you know how to use it mm -hmm. and you call for help. And then we have, and I don't talk about those two situations in most of my videos very often. I've talked about them, but not very often. Sure. But then we have the SHTF. Yes that I've talked about, that I talk about the most, and that is, it hits the fan. It's, uh, I've referred to it before, it's 28 days later, walking dead, zombies walking down the street. Right. Complete collapse. The boys at the FCC are worried about their families. They're not going to work. The trash delivery is stopped. Complete collapse. Right. And, in, and it's, a lot of people, and a lot of people say, oh, that's never going to happen. I won't worry about it. But there are a lot of people that prepare for that every day and uh, who are very prepared for that. Yeah. And in that scenario, that situation, uh, nobody cares. Right. Nobody cares. Sure. If, and the guys that do care, some people, those guys are going to be the ones that, like I said earlier, are the first to go. Uh, and that's just more food and uh, uh toilet paper for the rest of us because they're going to be whining about not following the rules uh, while the rest of us are out sc scavenging for food. Nobody's going to care. And it's, it, that's when you can use your radio for survival. Sure. Now, the, the thing with the with the SHTF that always strikes me is that like it's it's usually a lot of preparing for what, you know, we all hope won't happen. And the statistical likelihood is all, all things said and done, it, it won't happen. But uh, there is a contingent group within all these communities that is buying these radios, putting them on a shelf, and they're just hoping or, I guess, waiting, preparing for the day that something like this happens where they, where they can use them. So I argue that statistically there's no way it's possible that people are buying boofwangs and baofangs and everything else and only putting them on the shelf. I know they're probably kerchunkin amateur radio repeaters i know they're getting on gmrs with no call sign i know they're actually using that stuff they're just saying i'm waiting for collapse to happen for me to use it what do you think about that yeah they're they're out there they're learning they're yeah. watching videos they're reading yeah uh they're listening they're monitoring uh and they're probably off on with their buddies on frequencies uh that nobody listens to or out of range and they're they're practicing there's a lot of those guys um and uh they're, they're nothing wrong with that uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with that you know even though they are technically breaking the rules if they're practicing they're not causing any interference they're not harming anybody uh and only 
some people care about that. I don't know why anybody would care. Yeah, there's there's kind of a, a reality to it, and and I, I actually don't know the answer to this on GMRS. This kind of just came to me, so I'm uh, I'm curious. In amateur radio, if someone without a license keys up and onto a repeater or simplex or whatever and starts talking, a lot of the amateur radio operators won't respond to them. And the most will probably say like, hey, you should consider getting your license. Go here, 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 and, and be helpful that way. But they definitely won't have a conversation with them because that is, you know, violation. What's it like on GMRS when somebody shows up without a call sign? I'm guessing most people don't use a call sign on GMRS, but I don't know. Correct me. Uh in my experience, a lot of people do. If it's if somebody starts talking on simplex, if you're out off-roading, zero people care. Nobody cares. For sure. Uh, if, if you're at home, even in a uh, GMRS uh, thick area like where I live, if you're on simplex, most people don't care. Mm -hmm. If you get on a repeater, uh, more people will begin to care and more people will bring up and ask you for, the, uh, for your call sign. And depending on the repeater, uh, some of the guys may not talk to you or will start jamming you they'll start breaking the rules by jamming so that the other guy without the uh license can't talk but um in general gmrs people don't care mm -hmm. got to take a quick minute to say a big thank you to dan fox for joining us on the technician you're uh joining us in a membership there appreciate it tc fitz dropped a comment from uh w6tcf got a rare saturday off and i get to watch live i'm glad it was one with Randolfo. Uh, happy Saturday. Appreciate it. That's super cool. Uh, let's see. Going down the list here. We got a couple more. I think. Yeah, there it is. Uh, will, oh, this is a question for Randolfo here. Would a TID Radio H8 second gen be a good GMRS radio to start with? I watched not a Rubicon's review. Would you start with that one, Randy? Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't not start with uh, with it. Yeah, that's a that's a good radio. Uh... You would or would not start with it. I I I would. Oh, okay. Start with it. I, what I'm, I was a double negative. I would not not start with it. So, yes, I would start yeah, with you it. You have that's to be. A, a, yeah, that's a that was a smart people way of uh, yeah. answering that question. Yeah. <laughs> Flew I don't over know why I answer it that way. No, I like um, it. Yeah, that's that's a uh, good radio. And I just real quick one up before I forget because yeah. I will. Please. Uh, I saw in the chat as you started talking, my favorite viewer, Craig, pointed out that when we're on GMRS and we're talking on Simplex. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a lot of FRS users, and those right. FRS users, this is one of the things that makes GMRS very versatile, mm -hmm. uh, is that you can have a, a $10 or $9 uh, GMRS. The uh, Spider-Man radios, FRS, I call them. Uh, yes, or the uh, Hello Kitty radio. Yeah, SpongeBob. Um, and you can talk to everybody on GMRS, and they don't need a call sign. And when I'm listening on my fancy GMRS radio, I don't know if... Uh, if the person I'm talking to has an FRS radio mm -hmm. or not, another reason why we don't bother, why many people don't bother with call signs or asking or enforcing right. call signs. When on you're GMRS. slumming it with the plebes, with their right. with your with your high dollar GMRS radio, and they're only on their SpongeBob right. uh, talk box. Yeah, yeah, and um, they sound ha just as good most of the time. <laughs> Matthew Lords with the super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And Gray Man Poda, uh, continuing to be a member. Appreciate you uh, taking the time there, joining the membership. All right. So let let's dip into something that I know is uh, is oh hey also S five three K D. Thank you for joining the membership. Appreciate it. You uh, you and I have a similar. You probably mostly hate. I have a love hate relationship with the FCC because a lot of this stuff comes from like this. The, the the some people some hams the sad hams all that stuff that we talk that you talk about and I've mentioned that the 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 crusade that a lot of them on are predicated in a world that I think no longer exists anymore. Once upon a time, the FCC actually used to do enforcement, but now we still see it occasionally on like really egregious offenders, but not so much anymore. What do you think's going on with the FCC or what's been happening, particularly when it relates to our? communication service based hobby which is for the people gmrs amateur radio that kind of thing uh yeah so the fcc is, and i think a lot of people don't know this uh the fcc is not funded by our taxpayer dollars the fcc is self-funded so it sort of makes sense for them to go after or make enforcements that are going to fund them and and get them the money that they need to run their uh circus or whatever you want to call it <laughs> um so they spent and i think it's rightfully so that they spend 
the vast majority of their time and resources going after cell phone uh, people breaking rules and, and uh, radio stations and things that actually matter mm -hmm. to everybody. Um, so th they do not, not only do they not and have not in I don't know how many years, go out actively searching for people talking on GMRS or ham radio without a license or using or jamming repeaters or using a a uh, linear amplifier on CB. They don't go searching for those and haven't done that for a long time. Um, they only respond to complaints and of those complaints, they only respond, it seems, based on who they have actually uh, done enforcements on when it is um, affecting a lot of people, if it's affecting somebody's television reception or, or causing problems. Uh, it is very, very rare, and when I say rare, I mean like one in 12 years that they go after somebody that's just jamming uh, a repeater, for example. Uh, and just as long as we're talking about that, that was one guy uh, that just got busted in the last few months yeah. for jamming a GMRS repeater. There have been three or four other enforcements, three or four, uh, four or five total, since the year 2012 for people breaking, uh, for simple violations, uh, talking without a license or causing interference or being jerks on the radio. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, when I was a kid on CB, they were busting people all the time. They were kicking in doors and shooting dogs. Or, you know, <laughs> right. Maybe that was another three letter. Uh, a different, yeah, a different you know. one also yeah. gets on so, my ire a little bit. Yeah. So. Basically, the FCC, it's not that they don't care, mm -hmm. but they don't care. Um, they're, they're not going, it, it, you know, thousands of people, I know that it's very easy to submit a complaint to the FCC. You can do it online now. So they must be getting hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands a month. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that guy. Del, yeah, uh, Del Fargus mentions he was playing music for hours. Just so basically, that's illegally broadcasting. That's right. turning a GMRS right. repeater into right. a broadcast station, which is totally right. illegal, right? Yeah. So, and, and there's other, you know, we got guys out here doing that. We, we, I mean, I'm sure that there's horror stories from every, every city repeater. around. Every, every repeater's everyone. had a jerk yeah. show up. Yeah, everyone. Right. Yeah. And how many of them have gotten busted in the last? Ten None or twelve that years. I know of. Some of them have got One. a pin pushed through their coax. I can tell you that much. Well, yeah, vigilanteism. Not that I uh, do not condone that, but yeah. uh, that—that's all the FCC. You know, it's the only alternative. Mm -hmm. And we have, and we have. Uh, I personally uh, have gone out and tracked down using the uh, Kraken SDR locator. Well, we made a video um, too, with just doing it manually, the hard, the old-fashioned way, the old-fashioned old for sure. It was almost dumb easy yeah to track down um well dozens in practicing i would plant my guys out uh, all around town and i would right. go just play we would play games and go or fox hunting whatever um but it was easy to find uh jammers uh as long as we were in their local area so we could hear so we could hear their signal directly basically yeah. uh even one guy uh that thought he was smart that was doing it from his car driving around oh really we, Three no, hours. you know what? I, I uh, caught that clown in three hours. You, uh, you, so you posted a video on the Kraken SDR. It was earlier, much earlier this year, right? The beginning of this year? Uh, late last year, early this year. Okay, okay. Yeah, go watch, time. go watch those videos. The Kraken SDR, I think, is a game changer for, for really hunting down kind of these nefarious types that show up on repeaters. Yes. Any repeater, you can go track them down, which is super cool. So good video on that one. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know why you'd have a reason necessarily to do this, but have you ever been to the ham radio outlet in Anaheim? No. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, the, so the reason the reason why I mention it is there's actually uh, a manager of FCC um, enforcement researchers that goes there, and I've ran into them multiple times. You mean he works for the FCC? Yes, he's actually a okay. manager of the people who go out in the quote unquote FCC vans and does the reports and the, the they they build research, right? They they build research of illegal transmissions. And talking to him, I can't go into too much detail because he's asked me not to really mention it too much, but um you're right. They're they're mainly going after people with the with the fatter wallets, right? So folks who are illegally transmitting some of the pirate radio stations, stuff like that. Um 
that's about as much as I want to go into. But just think exactly what you said, you know, follow the dollar signs. A lot of times that's where a lot of this is coming from. And I, I think that's a, I think that's And it's not just, not just dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a big uh, priority on pirate radio stations. As a matter of fact, if you look yes. at the public uh, FCC database of their enforcements just this last week, yep. they issued like 10, uh, I don't know if it's an enforcement or a warrant, mean letters um, on uh, pirate radio stations, uh, not to the guys doing the transmitting, but to the guys that own the houses and the land that they were on, which I thought sure. was really interesting. So it's like they might have trouble stopping the guy from actually doing the transmitting, but you you put that landlord, uh, you put some heat on him, and he's going to make things happen. Yeah, and I guess if you if you get down to it, the FCC it's still following the dollar signs. They're making a ton of money off these broadcast licenses that they're selling, right? To to the stations, all the, the broadcast stations, etc. Um, they want to protect that. You know, well, right. that money. So it's that, indirectly. They're protecting yeah, the money. They're right. protecting the revenue stream. So for sure. So going back, let's let's go back to the to the SHTF. We're seeing a lot of people, preppers, right? I would say preppers. Both and, and I a prepper's not a four letter word to me. I, I consider myself a prepper. I think most people are prepper. If you have a fire extinguisher, you're probably a prepper. Uh they're buying Baofeng. Yeah, you like that. <laughs> Chinese made radios of amateur and GMRS variety. And lots of them never plan to get any kind of license, right? We hit this to a degree. But uh how how so we, we already talked about this to a degree, but I want to dive into this a little bit. So you get a lot of these radios out there, right? Whatever they're doing with them, transmitting with them, using them, saving them, whatever. Is this good for our collective hobby services, y your service, my service? We, we, I know that we're a bit different. You're a user, a tool-based type of user, and mine is a hobby slash service. Uh, is this good or bad? Because I see a lot of people screaming from the, the rooftops about Chinese radios and the effect of our services and all that stuff. And what, what, what say you with regards to the proliferation of this kind of equipment? Yeah, I don't see why some guy in his basement playing with his radios would care mm -hmm. if I or my neighbor has some radios that I'm learning to use and I keep them ready for when... You know something goes sideways i i don't i don't that doesn't even make sense to me yeah. if they're out there causing harmful interference or bugging you i get that that's that's one thing but just going and buying a radio learning how to use it uh and putting it aside uh, for a uh, rainy day why i don't even understand that thinking what what why right. why, why would you care how did in what way does this harm your hobby Have uh, so have you started to dip your toe into spurious emissions and the harmonics that some of these radios put out? Uh, no, because I don't care. GMR users don't care. don't care. I do not care. So it, well, that is true. So, that is true because because yeah. we've got the same thing on amateur radio. We care up to 70 centimeters, and then all of a sudden there's no more caring. So if your radio puts out spurious emissions on 70 centimeters, nobody really cares. And so that's why they're – they're good on two meters, but then you get up to 70 centimeters where part 97 ends for some reason, and then no big deal. And I don't think GMRS has any stipulation for harmonics. Uh, well, in the hardware, there there are some... I don't I don't know that that's yeah. true. Well, I don't... I can't quote the rule. I, yeah, I can't... Understanding. Yeah, I won't fact check it, but... Th there are some minimum... They can't be too noisy. But what's funny is that one of the big complaints that I used to get... I still get it... Uh, is the people saying how dangerous, dangerous yeah. the spurious RF emissions are. And then in the next sentence, or the sentence right before that, they say that my boof wang is so weak, it can't even talk down the block, mm -hmm. but the spurious emission, which is at a tenth of the power, yeah. uh, is going to bring down an airplane. Um, it just, we don't care. Normal people don't care about these things. If this is what keeps you up at night, then... Don't watch my videos. Now, I, 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 one, I watch your videos, but I classify myself as as not a normal person or, or a regular person. But it doesn't keep you up at night. No, no. But, You're not but, losing sleep. You're not sweating I, over this. Right, but I wanted to know the answer to this. So uh, did you ever get a talk pod? Did those talk pod guys reach out to you? Yeah. Yeah. So here, here, where's one of my – hold on. There's one behind me. I'm doing – I'm literally doing JSA call in the background. I don't know where my talk pods are. Anyway, I got a talk pod somewhere. doesn't matter. Well, well you know what I'm talking about. So yeah. talk pods are technically FCC GMRS radios, but the firmware allows you to transmit in two meters. And I, I, I looked on it on my little 
tiny SA Ultra Spectrum Analyzer, and it just has every harmonic, boom, 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 off the off the center frequency. So I thought to myself, how far could one actually hear your signal when you were transmitting with one of these radios on the even harmonics? So I set up my SDR to listen to the 1.25 meter and the 70 centimeter UHF meter band, so GMRS basically. And I took it on two meters, started at two meters, and I just started walking away from my house. I got a half a mile away from my house and could hear myself audibly, perfect copy on 1.25 meters and 70 centimeters at the same time I was transmitting. And I recorded it. Okay, so that's, a, well, now I believe... Well, you could point people to that in case they ask you again. You could point them to that say about okay. that far. <laughs> that was the, I'm guessing, that was the first generation I've had both. of those talk bots? I've, so you're saying that bad. the, the yep. newer one that they said was fixed? No, All it's right, not fixed. So it's, okay, so I would say then... Well, I, I guess that's a, that can be a problem. And, and I'm I, uh, by the way, I'm not calling out TalkPod because honestly, TalkPod reached out to me after I did my second video showing them the issues, and and they they're very serious about it, and they're like, oh no, we don't we don't want that to be the case. But they're kind of in a sticky spot because technically it's a GMRS radio that they got firmware that lets you do two meters, which it technically shouldn't. But this is gonna this is leading to another question, guys, that we're talking about here. But um, th th I think the curiosity is like. I don't think it's it's dangerous or damaging if people have told you that like spurious emissions will cause this problem. But it is true. Like you could hypothetically, um, one of those harmonics, if you're on if you're on 70 centimeters GMRS or, or R 70 centimeter band, you could be on an even harmonic that could end up in like first responder territory, like ambulance, uh, ambulances and paramedics, all that stuff, cops even, right? It could be similar if you were lucky, but you're, it's like the lottery, winning the lottery if you did right. the same one, right? Right, okay. So when, it, when the radio is that bad, all right, so that's not good. Um, but right. the average GMRS user doesn't, doesn't know or think about or, or, or care. When we buy it, uh, we expect that, and there, there is a, uh, I'm sure one of your viewers will go look it up if they don't have it memorized. There is a... Uh, requirement on the FCC radios for oh, harmonics. Good. good. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. So somebody please type it in. Um, so I would love I trust, that. Please in the comments. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Uh, I trust that when I buy it, it's going to meet the minimum, you know, FDA minimum daily requirements or whatever, and not do that because, uh, you know, when the ambulance is going to pick up my grandma, I don't want them to get lost because some kid just happened to be, you know, that one in a million long shot lottery nearby mm -hmm. and, uh, they didn't hear the uh, dispatcher or whatever. So that that's not good. So we do trust, I trust, that it's legal and meets all the uh, requirements. And, and oddly enough, that enforcement, quote unquote, at least the initial testing is done by the FCC, which people have brought up to me. They're like, how is it that these radios keep making it past the FCC? Right. And I'm I like, that's a that great up. question. Well, I okay, go ahead. go ahead. Go well, ahead. Talk about that. It, the, the FCC approved the radios. <laughs> right. So... But it is all on the other hand is that it's possible that the talk pod man or whoever any manufacturer says, oh, this radio is going to pass and he hands that to the uh, FCC and or whoever. I think they have to pay a third party to do the testing. Right. I could see where it would be very easy to make sure that you passed and that's kind of out of the FCC's control. I don't know what kind of controls they have for that. Um, but it happens. apparently. Yeah. I, I mean, that's kind of the reality of it. But yeah. Um, all right. So do you think the government is going, well, okay, let's, let's, let's come up for air a little bit. Now we're going to get, we're going to go down the, uh, the SHTF uh, path a little bit for a second. So I've gotten, I don't know if this is a thing with GMRS. I should give a little bit of context here. I have seen a lot of comments from people that say you give up your fourth amendment rights when you get an amateur radio license. You've probably heard this before. And, yeah, and the, those same rules apply to a GMRS. License. Oh, they do. Okay, well, the, I guess the rules that's true. That they're referring to right. I guess that's true because I knew a guy had no license, and the FCC still knocked on his door and wanted to come inside because uh, there was interference that was being created by his television cable box, and they they found out that yeah, it was the cable box that was creating interference. I'm assuming Comcast had a big fine that showed up on their door on Monday, but anyway. Do you think the government is going to use our GMRS and amateur radio license information to come track us down or track droves of people down when it is time for the uh, the great war before the full societal collapse? 
I think that our federal government yeah. will do will uh, make use of any resource at its that it has at its disposal sure. to go after a threat, no matter what that threat is. If that threat is that you're not going along with the uh, whatever this week's narrative is, uh, they they will do they'll do whatever they can, uh, legal or not. Right. Uh, so the question is, are GMRS users and ham radio users a threat? Why would the government care? Mm -hmm. um, and I think most of the time the government never would care. Therefore, you, you know, there would be no reason to to go after radio users unless it was a really bad day and maybe there was no internet anymore or temporarily or for who knows how long. And the only way to for people to communicate and spread information was over the radio. Yeah. I could then see where if what you were saying over the radio didn't match, wasn't what they wanted people to hear, mm -hmm. maybe they would. So I, guess, I, I think it's unlikely, but it's possible. I guess if somebody was and out they there. Will, sorry. No, sorry no, they no, will use uh, whatever means at their disposal. Oh, absolutely. If it, it's available to them. But I always argue that's like, do you drive a car? They're going to pull your driver's license information first. Or, well, are you, you talking know, about any are you bill? Talking about, are you talking about the, the Fourth Amendment thing where they can come knock on your door? Oh, and, uh, uh, oh, I see where you took it. Um, Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Let's stick with that. So my my whole point on that one is that um, I have not seen an example, although many people have told me this. I've only seen ever of an FCC person knocking on a door asking to see a specific thing. And then they walk to that specific thing and they look at that specific thing and then that's it. They could take it away. The 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 investigation is centered around that. If and when they're walking to it, they see eight kilos of cocaine and all that other stuff, they kind of have a duty to report and blah, blah, blah. That, that's a, a, a different issue. What I haven't seen is where people say, oh, no, the FBI get involved and the ATF gets involved and they, they go in and they do an investigation together. I've never seen evidence of that, but that's the concern a lot of people have. So the first one, the FCC can ask you, but you're always allowed to just say, no, thank you, FCC. You cannot come in. You don't you do not have a warrant that may end in you losing your license, which that's true. But if right. your privacy is more important, your Fourth Amendment rights are more important. That's a balancing act you have to you have to to weigh. And also, of course, there's going to be some you know, uh, appeals that you could go through to say like, well, you had no right to first knock on my door without asking, you know, send me something earlier or talk to me. I could have brought the equipment to you. I could have given you the equipment. You could have gone testing it. The fact that you wanted to set foot on my property is a, is a no, it's not an option for anyone without a warrant period. And that's just defending of my own rights. Um, so that I, I I'm with you, right? So that's the first thing, the, the, the fourth amendment. The, the other part is that there is a, a contingent of people that have commented on my channel and my, on my videos, particularly my, like, get license videos, that no one wants to get licensed because they think that's going to add them to, like, a, a government database, but which, by the, way, by the way, guys, yes, of course you're getting on a government database by getting a government radio license. The, the, the reality of it, though, is, like, how likely are they going to go to that to, to do a crime investigation? That, that was kind of where I was going with the, with the first part of the question. Yeah, I don't think that's very likely at all. Uh, you, they already know who you are and where you are uh, from your driver's license and monitoring your social media and all those things that they swore they never do. And right. actually, oh, they, they do do that. Uh, it, so unless it comes up, the, the situation comes up that I mentioned a minute ago where you are transmitting, you know, there's no more internet and uh, you're transmitting stuff over the radio that they don't want to hear, then maybe, but... I don't think they need to know your license. They, they know who you are and what you're doing. Of course. Uh, but I, I'm guessing if they're scraping the bottom of the barrel in the investigation to pull up the amateur radio license or the GMRS license, they probably have a fairly good report already built upon what it is you might have, yeah. might or might not have done. Right. Yeah. So, um, God, there was there was a whole part to that that I wanted to hit. Oh, no, you know what? I, I, I actually will... Uh, let me let me just take a second. I, I, and I always, by the way, if if you uh, if you're not following on a Rubicon and you watch his videos, right? Let's go ahead and pull this up here. Where is it? There it is. 
if you watch his if you go watch his videos every time he does a, a so many things happen his shirt is is always on point his mugs are amazing the ever growing wall of radios behind him but over his right hand shoulder that thing that television can change ah oh, yeah see he just changed it <laughs> but but see it said something earlier go back to what it said earlier uh you cannot comply your way out of tyranny. So that I think is actually I, I didn't necessarily have a question for this, but I saw that and I, I'm I'm really interested in your thoughts on this one. So somewhat we, we are complying right when we when we get a license. So what how do you balance the two? Because there's kind of a, a juxtaposition there. How do I balance uh, getting a license? Versus not complying or well, why why get a license when you can just I mean for GMRS if if it comes to any like if it comes to any license that you could just fudge your way into being a user of GMRS is probably the easiest one because you could just say ah I'm on FRS <laughs> I've got fifty watts FRS yeah. radio here right you just lie right yeah. so so why get a license on GMRS well I got a license on GMRS because I'm on YouTube and uh, <laughs> good answer videos good transmitting answer. all the good time good answer good answer okay so. As far as the normal schlub uh, that's going off roading, mm -hmm. I can't give a good reason why you need to get a license. I think it's good that the FCC knows how many people are out there using GMRS. I think that's the only way they have to measure of the uh, of the adoption of how many people are using GMRS is to get a license. Mm -hmm. If nobody got a license, I could see the FCC saying, "Well, nobody uses it, so we're going to." sell those frequencies to, uh, that's a, to the yep. ham guys or whatever, or to uh, we'll take whatever. Them. We'll take them. So, so that's, other than letting the FCC know that the service is in use, I don't have a good argument to get a license, especially for the guy that's just going out off-roading on the weekends. I just, I, I don't have, I can't convince you to get a license. I have now, no good argument. And I, and I know we, we probably should make a, a point here, right? Because I think sometimes you get, I think you get people that come at you for comments that are that are staunchly in the ham radio camp and they they really want to circle the wagons for ham radio and protect ham radio. And I think your statement, your statement is just about GMRS. You're not making a ham radio statement, an amateur radio statement or anything like that because the licensing structure for amateur radio I think is is different. It's it's vastly different from GMRS. Yeah, and I, I don't care what ham radio guys do. I don't care. Right, 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 sure. right. right. So I, I'm not I, – your statement on GMRS has nothing to do with whether people should get an amateur radio license or not, right? Well, I have made the comment, yeah. and I'll do it again here right okay. now, that I don't think you have to have I, – actually, I have a, a note here somewhere. Let me okay. find it. All right. Uh, 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 oh, shoot. He printed out Many, notes, folks. I do because I'm old. I forget things. Many people have left comments on my videos saying, uh, without a license, you won't know how to use your radio, kind of what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And I think without a license saying you won't know how to use your radio is an absolutely arrogant, sad, ham, retarded, bullshit thing to say. Um, I don't think you have to have a license to know how to use the radio. We already talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's where my comments uh overlap with the ham people is, is and really arguing with them saying well you know so i have a ham i have a ham radio i know how to use it and i don't have a license um but it's i don't go around telling people don't get a ham license i don't think i've ever said that no i know that's true well okay i don't well, know some people i haven't watched that all true. of your videos i can't yeah. uh, uh, affirmatively say you've never said anything like that but anything i've seen you've never presented that now that is interesting though so um I think that that's true. I think you're right that you could be a, a manual reader, go nuts, just go completely crazy in the manual and, and just go crazy on the radio and, and totally understand the ins and outs of every possible thing on a radio. But I think until you actually use the radio and you start communicating with people, that there's some nuances that you just can't attain. You just can't achieve, right? Would you, would you agree with that or no? Well, yes, but... Uh, when I'm talking about a ham radio, and I used to not talk about ham radios in my videos really at all, other than the Bufwang UV5R and just how to use it. Right. Um, and now I've been doing more videos about uh, having ham radios in a real SHTF uh, scenario. Yeah. Um, if that's all you're going to use your radio for, 
I don't know that you need to use all the to know all the nuances and in, in practice. You need to know how to use the equipment. Uh, but as far as nuances and talking with the other ham guys, you know, a lot of people don't care about that. So there are maybe nuances that you're talking about with the hardware itself. Um, or, or just being a good as, operator, right? I, I, I don't care if I if it's a, yeah. that SHT fee uh, should hit the fan that we yeah. talked. about. I don't care about being a good operator. I care about getting my emergency message to the guy across the ridge on the other side of town, or but what or wherever. So this is let's great. Keep, so so let's keep going with that. What if there's 50 new people on the air that took Randy's message and they've got their GMRS radios charged up. They never use them and they're all hopping on channels. What is it? Six, nine, 16. Which one of those is the emergency channel? For uh, there's one. There is one. On there's one. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> so no they're just looking for people talking and they're like, Oh my God, I found a human. Ah, I need help. I need, I need insulin. Gladys needs insulin now. Yeah. Right. Like you're going to be faced with a, a, a ton of operators that are just screaming. I need help. I need help. Right? What do you yeah, do in that situation? I write down their address, and in a week I go and I get their toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> I, I, so you, you must be a Darwin Award fan. Are you a Darwin Award fan? Do uh, you yeah, read the yes, Darwin Award? Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> um, How did I know? How did I know? So those are the guys that we were talking about earlier. That they're the first ones to go. And uh, honestly, when it you know when that situation arises where nothing matters and all those guys are out there screaming for help right um me and my guys and i know that the uh, that the preppers that do their training they're not going to be using gmrs frequencies they're going to be using their own set aside frequencies may not even be in the ham band okay probably so not even in the gmrs band i don't want you tipping hat here like giving away secret trade information but what what do you think people are going to be using the the the, the high speed low drag guys in yeah, shtf what are they going to be business license fcc <laughs> encrypted they're going to be using whatever they practice with. So good, good answer. Yeah. Good. I, okay. So, and it's different. I'm sure that there's standards that, uh, by, you know, that this book says, or that book says, I will be using a frequency in either the VHF or the UHF band could be one or the other. Yeah. That, that is in either DMR or P25 that is fully encrypted. Right. Uh, and I can see that chances of somebody happening across that frequency are very slim and the, and even less slim that they're going to know what I'm saying because it's fully uh, encrypted. So again, you've got the guys like you just mentioned, help, help, help. Gladys and needs guys, insulin. Yeah. That's and it. the guys that practice and prepared and, and know what they're doing and what their goals are. And they know who they want to talk to and they know what they want to do. Somebody, somebody just hit me in the chat with one of the best comments I've ever seen. Practice PTT without a battery. That's like you shooting your Glock with a with a snap cap. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot. That is the best comment of the entire live stream. The best way <laughs> to get practice PTT without a battery is the best way to attain radio knowledge. That is kudos. Top top. Uh, you get a hundred internets for that one. That is <laughs> fantastic. I cannot tell you how. <laughs> Uh, there was another one too. Somebody is asking you to stop. Okay, so we're we're getting off the 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 wagon train a little bit here. We're gonna go back to Randy for for some of his points. We are uh, almost ten minutes from ending the live stream. By the way, I would welcome all of you if you'd like to come join us. If you have um, amateur radio questions, we'll 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 take a couple GMRS CB questions as well. Randy is going to go have a, a wonderful meal with his uh, lovely wife. So he will not be joining us in the after chat, but he's always welcome anytime he wants to hop in. But if you'd like to join us and have your questions answered live, the link is in the description to our Discord. So please feel free to join us out there. But Randy, I think this is a good point, a good time in this live discussion where we, we get to the real meat of what a, a sad ham is and, and some people. Now, I'm not saying Craig is some of those people. I'm not saying Craig is a sad ham, but he's saying, just stop baiting hams, Randy. It's effing rude buddy. So what's he talking about? Craig, Craig, friend, uh, I do not bait hams. I do not make fun of ham radio operators. I do not give ham radio operators a hard time. I bait and make fun of and give a hard time to sad hams. And Craig, if you do not know the difference between a what the majority of helpful ham radio operators, 95% of the ham radios 
uh, operators that are out there. If you don't know the difference between those guys and a sad ham, then it is highly likely that you are a sad ham and you are who I'm making fun of. If you get offended when I say these things, you are probably a sad ham and you are probably part of the problem. The other 95% of the ham radio operators out there, the helpful, smart, uh, polite ones, they're laughing or they're saying, oh, that guy's yeah. a jerk or whatever. They're not getting upset and offended and leaving comments and chats. I think, I think also, so, so you, you, you do have, I mean, that's, that's a whole part of your channel is that it's, it's funny. You make time for jokes in your videos and, and I appreciate them. I love the dry humor. I love everything you do. Um, but when, when someone makes a comment that, you know, stop baiting or whatever, I think there's context that's sometimes needed. And in, in a YouTube chat that's scrolling between us right now, it's probably difficult to have context. So, I mean, I don't know. You you have a fairly active uh, X, Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. If if someone would like to give evidence of of Randolfo here, not a Rubicon, um, doing what he says he doesn't do, I, I'm sure you'd be willing to have that conversation if they want to link you to that, right? But I mean, like, no one's done that to date, have they? Of sh of showing me making fun of ham radio operators versus sad hams right exactly because i mean his comment was stop baiting hams and i never take offense to what you're saying because again i'm not i don't i don't take offense from from the statements you make because i, I understand where they're coming from the point you're trying to make yeah so yeah if 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 uh if there's evidence that i was making fun of ham radio operators right. versus sad hams yeah show it to me so i can please make a public yeah. apology there you go. Uh, so everybody watching right now, this would be the time. If you'd like to ask a question, if we have a QA, and a we'd like to do that. So if you just at Ham Radio Crash Course or you say question in in somewhere in the title of whatever you're sending in the comments, we'll try and uh, answer it. And this is the best one to get started with. Bob the Traveler says, WTF is a sad ham. Uh-oh. Randy, wait, hold on. I'm going to go. I'm going to go straight to you, buddy. Go ahead. Answer the question. That is a sad ham. What is it, though? The, the uh, sad ham. All right, so you got two types in my experience, and this has been echoed by thousands of my viewers and comments. Uh, you've got two types of ham radio operators. You've got the 95% of good, helpful, courteous, polite ham radio operators, like Josh. And then you've got that small minority of very vocal assholes that just also happen to be ham radio operators they're the ones that chase away the potential new uh, ham radio yep. members online they're the ones that make fun of you because you're not as smart as they think they think they are uh they're just jerks uh they're oftentimes uh, uh don't have a sense of humor and many of my little comments go right over their head and that makes them very angry sometimes uh uh, oftentimes, because I have been, uh, people have made the accusation that I have a little bit of sarcasm in my personality. Oftentimes they have trouble grasping sarcasm or anything that's not literal. Um, so basically the sad ham is the guy that acts as though he is speaking for the entire ham community and he's just a jerk or a, mm -hmm. an a-hole. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I've experienced a ton of, of ham radio operators that are great people, but then also are, can be curmudgeonly about rules and uh, they're they're free with their knowledge and they flow like honey and milk and all that fun stuff that we talk about in mythology. Uh, but at the same time, they get really serious about some of the stuff. So it is a balancing act, I think, particularly with you get when you get into amateur radio. But I think that generally. Uh, I love you. I love your videos. I think they're funny. Oh. They're hilarious, and I, oh, I enjoy you. watching them. Yeah. Yours aren't too. Yours aren't too bad. I appreciate. Um, that. I think. Uh, I think that the sad hams are getting some kind of kickback for every new ham radio operator that they sign up, because the one of the thing. Well, the two things that they do. <laughs> here's how you identify. It, it boosts a sad their ham. ham radio social credit. Is if, what it does. It, it, if they start a comment online with "I've been a ham radio operator for 25 years." Uh, or if they say you really should just get a license when you're asking a question about GMRS or about your FRS radio, yeah, that's a good sign. The other that they might be a, a sad ham. The other thing is if they first come out, the first thing that they say is I'm not a sad ham. You might be a sad ham yeah. if you say I, I'm not a sad ham. Those are the 
those are the obvious giveaways. I, I've had a number of people. So uh, you you might know this. It, well, I think you 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 were on one of my after chats briefly, right? The, the last time we did one, I think you hung out for a little bit before you you hopped out for dinner. Yeah. Um, there's a number of people who show up in the after chats, and they'll give me the like they'll give me their resume. I call it reading off the ah. resume to me before we get to the point of it. And it's like, listen, <sighs> your argument can stand up on its own. I'm happy to take your argument completely at face value. I've been here for 30 value. years. I work yeah. on these radios and right. I blah, blah, blah. Right, right. It's right. crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that's, I, that guy's probably a sad ham. Yeah. <laughs> so question to, uh, to Randolfo. What is the story behind Randolfo Cafe? That's my name, man. Don't make fun of my name. You know, it's the cafe uh, part of it. That's the last name. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> you look up my GMRS license. That's the official name. Yeah. Uh, let's see. When will the uh, hashtag Boofwang shirts go uh, on the store? <laughs> Maybe. I, I don't know. Do you have Do you have a store? Do you want to take that, Randy, or should I make the Boofwang? No, no. Go ahead. You could just pay me the uh, the licensing fees. Okay. We'll uh, we'll talk after. after. Well, I'll lawyer. Yeah. My lawyer will talk to your yeah, lawyer. As right. as the big YouTubers that we are, I I will have my lawyer contact your uh, lawyer. John uh, speaking of which, I didn't realize you're up to 300,000. Mm. So congratulations. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, I had just made a comment in one of my last videos that I am the number one ham radio, uh, sorry, the number one GMRS radio YouTuber and also the number two ham radio YouTuber. So I mean, <laughs> I think Jason, I think Jason, Jason might isn't be, happy with that. Jason is, I don't think he's happy with that statement. I don't think, that's, I don't think he's happy about that. He, he's not sorry, Jason. I love you, but, uh, and, uh, we do, we do. You're, you're next. You're next, Josh. Uh, oh, I don't know. Looking at the numbers, up. looking at the numbers. Yeah, I don't it's, think I'm, it's the I'm same. Trying. Eh, we're, you know what? I, if I can stay at pace with you, I'm happy because you're, you're literally, you are so like if I think about it in the sense of like there's very few people that are doing GMRS videos to your quality and anybody who even gets close to that is like or or anyone making videos like that there's nobody really like what you do right um so that's that's also got its own little boost behind it because you're getting a lot of people interested in in just radio in general because I think GMRS is for a lot of people the logical first step kind of into radio and that may be their only step and that's fine but like that's it's easier to let me, let me put it this way it's easier to mint a gmrs user even if they don't use a license than it is to get an amateur radio oh, user yeah. on the air right oh, yeah. it's yeah. a lot Much harder easier for, for me, me. yeah, yeah. You, yeah you, get, for me. you stack the deck against me a little bit so if i lose <laughs> to you i i won't feel so bad but I, i'll tell you i'm, I'm not going to go down f without fighting <laughs> so <laughs> That question, I can answer that next question. Which one? The, the off-road? Oh, no, no, the, go back. The uh, sad, where are the sad GMRSers? Is that oh, yeah, saying? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me go back. Yeah, are there sad right. so GMRSers? There, no, there are not. However, there are sad hams disguised as GMRSers. Oh, and you, oh. All right. And if you go somewhere like uh, mygmrs.com or any online. Uh, Those are just ham radio operators, right? My they, GMRS? They they say some jackwad comment or whatever, like uh, you know, uh, and you're like, wow, that's what something a a uh, this is a GMRS site, but that's something a sad ham would oh, say. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You, you look down in their signature, and Call right sign. after the well, after the list of all the radios that they own, <laughs> uh, and their the rest of their resume, yeah, then there's a, a, a ham call sign. There is there are very few sad GMRSers, and they are usually latent sad hams. Or if not, just outright sad hands. I, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can understand. I, I can, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, because there's a lot of ham radio operators with GMRS licenses, and and they try and make GMRS amateur radio, which it yeah, is not. Yeah, and that's don't do that, man. Don't that's, do that. Makes you look stupid. Will you bring no. back the off-road videos on your channel? No, sir. Listen, if uh, if you go back in my history, uh, my video history, you'll yeah. see some. Uh, some good off-road video, uh, some not so good off-road videos, and some that I think are very good. Uh, that you know used that took a lot of time and effort and resources to make. We'll just say that nobody watches. Uh, I don't, a lot of people probably probably don't know, but I have a series of videos called In for Low. I was and hoping for, you were going to mention this because okay, I was so going to bring I, it up if you didn't. 
I and the number four L O all together in four low. Yeah. And there was two seasons of those, uh, 12 or 13 videos all together that for two years were exclusively on Amazon prime video. Uh, and we had millions and millions of views on those through Amazon prime video. Things with Amazon Prime changed. Uh, it turned out that now I can put them on YouTube. I couldn't put them on YouTube before. So a couple of years ago, I put those videos along with all of my previous lesser quality off-roading videos and nobody watches them. So uh, it would take to make one of those in for low videos, which are my pride and joy. Most of them. They're some great. Of them suck, but, I went back and watched uh, them after we talked and after I, you shared that off-roading experience with me. I went back and watched them. They're great. Right. Good so stuff. some of those would take... Uh, we had t up to 12 cameras, That's uh, 12 That's cameras. It, That's uh, crazy. It, it, even though the expenses were very low, it costed, you know, it wasn't cheap to make in those gear. videos. Yeah. Uh, gear well, it, and it, it having, Amazon dollars. Sure. Uh, I put them on, uh, and it would take weeks, two or three weeks bucks. of editing. Uh, and I put it on YouTube, expecting the same kind of traffic and, uh, traction that we got on Amazon and, you know, 300 people watch it. Nobody watches them. Crazy. So I, I can I make mean, a I can make a video making fun of sad hams and 50,000 people will watch it in two right. days. And so why? So, so what what do you think that is? Is it just because you've branded your channel that radio that it's hard to splice in the, the off road? I, like, you, I don't you should, think so. Like they're so different. Like you should almost create another off road channel just so you could post all that stuff and the, just have it live. I, I did the off road videos, mm -hmm. not those specific in for low videos, but other decent off-road videos for three or four years before I even talked about a Boof Huang, Boof Huang UV5R. Right. And nobody watched those videos either. I had, it took me three or four years to get 10,000 subscribers. Um, That's so wild. It's just, I think because my videos, most of them focused on Jeeps. So that mm -hmm. kind of narrowed the number of people that care to watch it, uh, even though some of the newer but ones, then, but then, but then you were also offered. competing against a lot of Jeep channels because they've been around forever, right? And yeah. uh, most of my earlier videos, uh, not only were they just Jeeps, but they were off uh, uh, rock crawling, which is a specific type also of a very niche within a niche, yeah, right, yeah, right. So yeah. I cut my audience down, uh, and that's part of the reason I think why not a lot of people are interested because there's not that many people out there. But there were millions of them on Amazon Prime that loved watching those in four low videos. So the answer to the oh, question. That's, that's I Will you that. bring Keep back going, the off-road videos to your channel? No. I, I love the uh, I love the juxtaposition of if you're in front of a TV, content becomes purely aspirational. Like you're just – I'm vicariously living through someone else. But then when you're on YouTube, a lot of the time you're on YouTube because you're trying to do something or you're, you're trying to achieve something or, or get knowledgeable about a thing. Would yeah, you? it was definitely a, a whole different group of people yeah. lay, laying on their couch with the big TV right. in the living room watching right. versus the people coming to YouTube. So that has a lot to do with it, too. I think, yeah, um, that's... But, but by the way, uh, Randy and I had a lot of this conversation when, when he let me hop in the Jeep, which I had a lot of fun, and drive up to Big Bear. We did a we did a POTA. I'm uh, sorry. We did a soda activation. You can see that on both of our channels. I highly recommend you go watch that. Some of the best video making uh, that is out there right now. Let's see. Go back here. Uh, question from Ho uh, Hornet VC: Is there a good entry level GMRS that tests out good and is not made in China? Oh, that's a really good question. Not made it. Is there even one G? Oh, yeah, no, there is. Uh, wait, made in China? I don't yeah, think that no, exists. They're all made in China. They're, they're all made in of. China. Yeah, for a long time, Midlands were made in Philippines or Malaysia or somewhere. They're all. They're all from China now. That time is done. All right, question. I have a tech license. I do not feel I am using any of my ham knowledge for taking or uh, talking on VHF, UHF repeaters. It's just knowing chirp and repeater book. Do we really need a license? Um. So I I didn't know how this conversation- Yes, you must have a license. I didn't know how this conversation was gonna go and I don't wanna get too in the weeds here, but hold on, let me let me pull this up and I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring in- uh, not a Rubicon. Where is it? Hold on. There he is. There we go. We got him here. All right. So here's uh, here's many images of the electromagnetic spectrum, right? 
And I, I, I'm not going to pull up any one of them because I don't think it really matters that much. Just know that like low frequency is low, high frequency be high kind of thing, right? That's a finite resource. So when you're talking about GMRS and the frequencies that it, that it lives in and uh, VH, uh, UHF, that side uh, for, for GMRS and, and UHF, sorry, I'm mixing all my bands up, but... Everywhere radio is, is a finite resource, and that gets sliced up, right? And it's not just the FCC. It's it's an international agreement on how this gets sliced up. The reasons why licenses exist is because if you don't have a license for something, even as a free user or a very cheap user, someone will pay commercial dollars to, to buy that real estate. It's like... Literally, if if just Texas got bulldozed and everybody could just go put a, a little property marker down and get that property, it's limited resources. It will go away. And if you don't have allocations and planning for it, then lawlessness will reign free, right? That's that's kind of the, the point, semi-point of this conversation. Um, do you need a license technically to operate a Baofeng radio and all that stuff? No. Do you need a license to be acknowledged in the system, in the metrics of amateur radio as a hobby? If you want to perpetuate amateur radio as being a hobby that should exist, then then yes. And the same would go with GMRS. If you'd like GMRS to stick around as a good tool that you could use in certain situations, then yes, you should uh, have a license so that the FCC and whatever government that you may be involved in knows that there are people that are using these bands. Because if you don't use it, what will the government do? Figure out how to make money on it. They'll get rid of all of that and they'll sell it to somebody that will pay more money for it and of no citizen value. So as much as I am a hardcore non-government kind of guy, there are some parts of the uh, the system that we got to dip our toe in to say like, hey, don't take this from me. I want to keep this for our citizen use. And that's why it's important to me. I don't know, Randy, you want to add your thoughts to that? I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah, as, as a the ham hobby, which I don't really care about, but I know a sure. lot of guys do, a lot of people do. That gets their entire lives for some people. It's yeah, it's my it, entire life, Randy. Right. It's all I got, man. It's all I got. No. So if you wanna if you wanna dabble in that, then yeah, you should get the license, and so the government doesn't take it away. Same with GMRS, though, right? Like, I mean, hypothetically. Well, yeah, that was my only argument for getting the the license for yeah. GMRS. But um, so yeah. Yeah, we're a little bit over time. I think we got a couple more questions. We're going to let Randy yeah, go here, have a, a delicious dinner with his wife. Uh, so question is, uh, is it is encryption illegal on GMRS communications as it is on amateur bands? Uh, encryption is not permitted. Illegal versus breaking FCC rules. That, that, There's a whole we argument should probably, on that. You should, if you got the time, you should probably dive yeah. answer this and then, then dive into that a little okay. bit because that's so, a really good point. Right. So uh, to my knowledge, it breaks the FCC rules uh, to uh, transmit. Uh, you, you can't do encryption on GMRS for one, because it breaks the rules. And two, uh, because that would have to be digital and digital over GMRS is just annoying as heck. If you're the guy that has to listen to two people talking digitally uh, on your radio, it's just it's a mess. Um, I said rules versus illegal or laws. Uh, because there is a lot of online discussion over uh, FCC rules not being laws. Uh, it's administrative law, and it's confusing, and I don't know the answers. Um, but many people will say it's not against the law. It's not illegal. It's, the, it's not criminal. Uh, but there True. are still rules, and those rules are backed up uh, by Congress, who gave the FCC the authority to make these rules, uh, I don't know. Look it up. Don't listen to me. It, 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 okay. I will, I will reiterate what Randy said earlier. Neither of us are lawyers. So if you're ever facing something like this, this is not legal advice and you should, you know, contact a lawyer. The reality is, is if the federal, if an arm of the federal government is sending you a letter that says, Hey dog, you owe me $25,000, uh, it's not something where you can walk into the courtroom and say, I'm a sovereign citizen and a boat captain of my uh, Cadillac uh, 
El Dorado. Like you, you don't not, Pitoria. right, right. You Pitoria don't, you, you don't get to. There, there's not a claim of that is not. This is not a criminal thing that I violated. Like that doesn't exist, man. So if you if you're walking with a a fine like that. You need legal representation. So a lot of a lot of sub sub people, sad hams that that pull down these hot twenty five thousand dollar plus fines, like a uh, Billy. I'm thinking of the the Warfanet jammer. These are situations that like is supremely unique to a specific group of people who have like really got on the radar of the right people at the government. Um, at the end of the day. Y- y- you're you're going to need legal help for all that stuff. Uh, another thing we probably should have talked about this earlier yeah. when we we're talking about enforcements is, as far as I know, and there could be some exceptions, but every enforcement that I've seen, especially these guys at th- this year, those four or five that really got nailed, the procedure for the FCC always starts with sending you a mean letter. Every one of those guys that got busted and, and had proposed fines Every one of those started with a mean letter that basically said, here's what we think you're doing. Right. Stop. Don't do it. Stop, Stop. doing it. Stop. And replied, reply to our letter and let us know how you're going to not do this anymore. Yeah. I don't, I am not aware of any enforcements that they just issued a fine. I'm not saying it's never happened, but. I think you're right. I, I don't know. If I don't know. If it one. starts with a letter and all you have to do is just stop and reply and tell them, all right, I stopped. And yeah. here's how I stopped. I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. So. Couple of more questions to slam out here, uh, Randy. As the number four dad, who is one through three? <laughs> well, number one is Josh. No, oh, no, it's George Washington, the father <laughs> the, of our nation. The father, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's the guys that they got the number one and number two and number I definitely three did not get a number did. one mug. I did not. Yeah. No, there's no way. I'm the radio dad. I'm not a not, not necessarily a good <laughs> inhuman personal dad. Question, I live in Texas and have a GMRS license. Can my extended family, like my... Br- See, this is this is where you get screwed up. Brother-in-law, parents, and cousins use my GMRS call when they live in California. Uh, short answer to that is no. Uh, prefaced with, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I do read English and I have read the FCC rules. You can read them yourself. On the, the FCC outlines who the immediate family is, the, you know, aunts, uncles, whatever... And it has some wording in the ruling that says something to the effect of uh, you have to be there, right? You can't, uh, uh, I don't know if you have to be standing right next to them, but uh, I think the short answer to this is no. Again, if you did, nobody would know and nobody would care. And you might, and if anybody did care and if anybody did know, you would get a mean letter that says stop, but that that, that uh, this is never there's never been an enforcement for an right. extended family member that shouldn't have been using a license was using somebody's license and the, the, the FCC old, has never cared. The old GMRS wives' tale that I've always heard is your your direct family, meaning your 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 progeny and your your spouse, uh, can use your call sign. But I've also heard that the parents can use the same call sign. That's always a, a little trope that gets pulled out. I don't remember. It's very clearly, yeah. uh, unusually clear for the FCC and the government. It's it's spelled out pretty clear on the uh, in the rules. Yeah. So a couple more things. I think we already hit it, but I'm going to hit Tom up one more time. Is encryption illegal? So I think we already said that legality is the question here because technically it's not like you're not going to dra- like be dragged into criminal court if you use encryption but if you get caught using encryption you may very well find a, a nasty letter from the FCC in your inbox along with potentially a fine in the future right Randy would you agree with what i just said uh the nasty letters are actually worded very nicely uh but it always starts with the nasty letter and the fine we've been trying to contact uh, yeah. you about your illegal use of encrypted <laughs> right. radios yeah. uh it has never happened before that i'm aware of i have it's not in the fcc enforcement database which by law has to list every enforcement um but potentially yeah um you would get a letter and uh if you don't stop uh, being a jerk you would actually get more letters uh finally ending up in a proposed fine as right. you meant. They don't just slap a fine on you. They go, right. it's a whole uh, administrative procedure. And I have read, I'm not a lawyer, uh, that 
a lot of these guys, the few guys that have been fined in the last few years, uh, have never paid their fines. There's a big the jammer guy here in L.A. Yeah, uh, I forget his name. I'm sure because he was a uh, ham. I think. Uh, uh, has Billy never... Billy just keeps dragging it out. That guy's gonna die before he pays a fine. Yeah. So uh, basically, the the wives' tales that some people and some people is not just sad hams. It's just sure. internet jerks. Yeah. Uh, about the big ten thousand dollar fines doesn't happen yeah and i'm gonna end on this which is one of my my favorite questions this is also my favorite answer for what is my de- my favorite denomination of uh youtube super chats randy what is your favorite caliber nine millimeter is it i it's didn't expect a nine day. millimeter answer really is that the one it's easy easier to carry yep that's just uh, i can see that for ease of carry yeah yeah. I mean, my, yeah, my my joint that I'll sometimes roll with is a 380 because that's like the smallest of the small. Because, you know, I, I roll, you know, Southern California down here close to the beach. We we, we do speedo carry. <laughs> we got to go. We got to go 380 right. for speedo carry. Uh, my county sheriff who decrees who can and well, anyway, uh, they don't you, like you live in the free part of Cal. By the way, for you, e- everyone that that talks about california randy is more on the line of what you'd consider a freer california they actually have carry licenses and all that other stuff right randy please correct the the masses so they know oh yeah yeah, yeah. uh i'm in the free or i don't know if it's the freest uh, our county sheriff the last couple of county sheriffs uh which by california law i don't know if it's like this all over the country they're who decree who can and cannot carry uh to you know, enforce their God-given right to protect themselves. Right. Uh, they have been very pro uh, self-protection for the last several years. Um, I forget what else I was going to say, but they don't like 380. They like they want to make sure that if you have to use it, it's going to work. Oh yeah, I would never give a 380 to a cop unless it's like a backup gun or something like that. Right. But right. My favorite side is also not too bad. Yeah, my favorite handgun caliber is 357. Still to this day, love actually shooting that. It's one of my favorites. At the same time, my my Glock, my primary Glock is nine millimeter. So I know where you're coming from, but in California, we can't have standard capacity magazines. Standard, not extended. Standard capacity magazines. Yeah, yeah they're scary. It's so scary. I'm. I'm. Yeah. Everybody in my house flees when when I start talking about <laughs> magazine capacities. Just just pure pure fright. Randy, it has been a joy, a joy having you on the channel today. I, I, I cannot imagine spending a better Saturday than hanging out with you, man. It was a lot of fun. Is there anything you want to mention or talk about or anything? Go nuts, man. Take the time. Floor is yours. Allow me to just say, no, there's nothing special I want to say. Uh, <laughs> follow me on, on X, formerly known as Twitter, at, uh, what is it, at the Nada Rubicon? I don't remember. Search Nada Rubicon, you'll find there me. There you go. Uh, and most importantly, kids... Don't be a sad ham. Don't be a sad ham. Yeah, I, I think that's... Don't be a sad anything, because I think that's just a terminal disease that you get. And then you look at life through this jaded lens of just getting in other people's business. Most of the time, you should just mind your own business, and you can be totally fine. I don't know. There you go, guys. I really do appreciate it. Randy, uh, hang out if you got a minute. I'll talk to you in a minute, but I'm going to wrap things up here. I uh, I appreciate everybody hanging out, taking the time. We're going to do the after chat. Don't worry. The link is in the description to join us on the Discord. Uh, we will take your amateur radio questions, but if you're a GMRS user, we will we'll toil. We'll toil to help you. We might be able to. I don't know. Uh, but please, please join us over there. We'd love to have you. And, uh, yeah, big shout out to all the patrons helping me do what I do. Patron Picks was delayed I, I know this is the second month I've delayed patron picks, but uh, Randy, by the way, we didn't mention it, but uh, Randy is still very active in off-roading, and he is usually out all the time, all the time off-roading. I got very lucky. I got very lucky that Randy was available this weekend, so I took all advantage of it to have him on to say hi and talk about all those interesting things. So these are our producer patrons. These are the ones that vote for the patron picks episode. And so next week's episode is going to be a big deal. Oh, secret word. I didn't show the secret word. By the way, the secret word is boof wang. We'll end with boof wang. <laughs> boof um, wang. Boof wang. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Andy. The, the secret word is boof wang. It, it, B-O-O-F-W-A-N-G. Boof wang. It rhymes with cool whip. Cool whip. But boof wang. There you go. Yeah. So I, I will I will uh, pull up the secret word in a second and then we'll we'll wrap up. But uh, 
yeah, thank you. Shout out to all of the patrons. So next, yeah, next Saturday will be the patron picks episode, which I think, I think is one that I didn't expect was going to win. So if you're not a part of the Patreon team, then you don't know what the answer is. But uh, this this was a, a different one. I'm I'm kind of surprised that it won. This is one of those ones that was kind of like on the the lower tier that I didn't expect would be the ever would come up to the top tier. But here we go. We're going to talk about how to build a complex or or a effective and complete radio programming <clears throat> system. So there we go. We're going to do that next week. We're going to break it all down for emergencies and everything else. Um, Lee is asking, can we enter every week or just once? It's just once. It's just once. And uh, you w the, the bot that I use will remove all the duplicates. So don't even try to duplicate it. it it's not going to get you anywhere doing a duplicate. Appreciate you asking that question, though, Lee. All right. I think we're pretty much at the end there. Want a big shout out to everybody. Again, lots of support. Appreciate it. And let's see. Did I miss a comment? Oh, someone is just writing question with, with colon and nothing answered to it. Not a Rubicon waving at everybody. There's the man right there. And a shout out to the homebrew crew. All my love and respect. Appreciate it. And there it is. The secret word is Boofwang. Is that right? Am I spelling that wrong, Randy? Boofwang? Boofwang. You missed the H. Boofwang. Oh, it, there's a Hwang. Okay. The H so hwang. We're, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to cool penalize whip. you. We're not going to penalize you if you don't have the H. But if you were uh, forethought enough to get the H in there, we, we will uh, accept either no H or with the H. So let's see. Do we get it in there? Let's see. We get in there. We got that H. There it is. We got it. All right. So we've completed the uh, assignment. Bullwang is the secret word. Appreciate y'all watching. I'm going to wrap things up here and we're going to start the after chat. But uh, until then, thank you for watching and enjoy the memes as we play you out. Mm -hmm.